I have a new video for you guys because we need to talk about Shia LaBeouf. This man is an American actor, performance artist, and a filmmaker. He started off in Hollywood as a child star and grew into a megastar. But along the way to his stardom, he has caused a lot of damage. Today, we're talking about Shia's dark and problematic past. So let's get into it. <music> Before we get into this video, here is a quick message from our sponsor. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that you can use to shop from over 600 brands. And what's fun about Scentbird is they allow you to try a new designer fragrance every month just for $16. I actually received this cologne by John Darm and it smells so good and I love the matte black packaging. And what's cool about Scentbird is they send you these little cards to explain the fragrance. For example, this one says seductively sweet with notes of cola berry and hints of citrus. The warm woody spice of clove and pepper deepens the alluring aroma echoing its signature amber color. I love it but what's great about Scentbird is you get to pick your fragrances every month so there's no surprises. They have perfume, cologne, and a bunch of options including unisex. With each fragrance you will receive a 30-day supply and pretty much the scent comes in this packaging. You can twist it up and spray. Oh, it smells so good. And you can actually pull out the vial and you can see I've got a good amount left. And I've been using this for about a week now. This is definitely one of my favorite scents. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because it's John Varvardos and it's bougie. They also have a bunch of other designer brands, including indie brands that you probably haven't heard of before. So I recommend trying it out. There are so many high end fragrances on this website. And if you end up liking a scent, you can purchase a full bottle. But if not, you can get yourself a a subscription and try a different scent every month. And if you use my code, you will spend only $11 for your first order. So use my code SL04N for 30% off your order from Scentbird. You can also check out more scents on their website, their Instagram, or try their new app for iPhone or Android devices. Thank you Scentbird for sponsoring this video and happy shopping. If you guys don't know who Shia LaBeouf is, you may recognize him from some of your favorite childhood TV shows like Even Stevens or maybe the movie Holes from back in 2003. He's been in the entertainment industry for a very long time, but let's briefly talk about his childhood and his family life. Shia was born in Los Angeles to his mother, Shayna, and his father, Jeffrey. He is an only child. He got into the industry at a young age because he actually saw one of his friends acting on Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman back in 1993. And after seeing his friend do it, he was like, wait, I want to become an actor. So his mom called up an agent. They met with him. They liked him. And they signed him right away. So Shia had a successful career in Hollywood from pretty early on. Unfortunately, his parents split up at five years old, and it looks like Shia describes his father as a drug-dealing clown. I'm sure he doesn't do that anymore, but back in the day, that's what he was up to. Through his years in Hollywood, he has done a ton. He's been in so many different movies. Like when I was reviewing his IMDb, I was shook to just see how much this guy has worked, and he never really has stopped. Shia is currently 35 years old and he's still very active in Hollywood, but he's definitely slowed down after the whole situation with FKA Twigs. If you guys don't know who FKA Twigs is, she is a singer who has really great music. I've been a fan of hers for a long time, but she also had an extremely toxic relationship with Shia. They actually met on the set of the movie Honey Boy back in 2018. They dated for nine months and then split up in May 2019. They said at the time it was because of conflicting work schedules, but we found out in 2020 it was way more than that. Before we dive into their relationship, I do want to give you guys a trigger warning because FK Twigs went through hell and back being with Shia and she shared some very disturbing things. So trigger warning on that. After we talk about him and FK Twigs, we will go down memory lane and talk about all the times that Shia has been arrested or has gotten himself in trouble. So we found out truly how bad their relationship was in December 2020 when FK Twigs filed a lawsuit against Shia. In this report, she claims that Shia emotionally emotionally harmed her and physically harmed her during their relationship in 2018 through 2019. 
It's weird to think that he was fighting with her during the time that he was filming that Honey Boy movie because that's like an autobiography of his. And I feel like maybe he was, I don't know, in a really bad place because he was remembering all these traumatic things he's gone through and then filming the movie. But at the end of the day, it's no excuse for him to treat anyone like this. So I'm glad that FKA Twigs exposed him and brought it to court. FKA told a reporter, what I went through with Shia is the worst thing I've ever been through in my whole life. And she shared stories about him throwing her against a car, um, grabbing her neck, giving her bruises. Oh, gosh. The singer also claimed that Shia was emotionally, you know, harmful and wouldn't let her wear clothing to bed. Oh, that's weird. On top of that, she also shares that he would give her diseases, like transmit diseases to her because he just wasn't clean. Oh, and he'd grab her skin so hard that she was bruised. Please. On the whole STD situation, I have some things to share about that because Shia actually tried to cover up the STD symptoms with makeup which sounds really just evil that he would go and put her to risk like this and would use makeup to hide what he's going through. Unfortunately, FK Twigs started experiencing some symptoms in March 2019. When she confronted Shia about it, then he admitted that he had an STD, which he's been diagnosed with years earlier. At that point, FK Twigs was shocked and mortified. She went to get some blood work done and she realized that she also has the disease. She also claims that Shia's lawyer dismissed this whole situation and said, it's not that bad. Finally, FK FK Twigs also met another woman who also got this disease from him. So he was going around and hooking up with these people, spreading this disease, which is just god awful. The lawsuit also includes a claim that Shia would keep a loaded firearm by the bed, which made the singer scared to get up at night in case he mistakenly thought that she was an intruder. <gasps> oh no. I would be so scared too, especially if he's like not mentally stable and he's like, oh, intruder, and then boom, boom, boom. This story is definitely the worst of them all. So just after Valentine's Day in 2019, FK Twigs was in the car speeding towards LA with her boyfriend. Of course, Shia was driving. She said in the lawsuit that he was removing his seatbelt and threatening to crash unless she prefer her love for him. They were returning from the desert, where Shia, the star of Transformers, had raged at her throughout the trip. FK Twig said in a lawsuit once, waking her up in the middle of the night by just grabbing her neck. After she begged to be let out of the car, she said he pulled over at a gas station and she took her bags from the trunk. But Shia followed and hurt her, throwing her against the car while screaming in her face, according to the lawsuit. Then he forced her back in the car. I was literally starting to black out when I was reading that because it just sounds so horrible what he would put her through. And obviously he's got a lot of like issues with control because it sounds very controlling what he put her through. And it's not just her. There are multiple girlfriends who actually stepped forward after she stepped forward because they felt more comfortable and, you know, the reporters were asking around. So I guess they were happy to share. One of his exes, named Carolyn told the New York Times that there was one time where he held her to the ground and was headbutting her until she had like a, an open wound. That's so insane to me that he would go pin her to the bed and then headbutt her until she had like an open wound and stuff. Like what? Why would he even do that? That sounds so like destructive for both people. Like he's just smashing his head into her head so that they harm each other. That's like... Ugh psychopath like energy. But when all of these allegations came out in December 2020, Shia said that none of them were true. He said that FK Twig's allegations and the other ex-girlfriends are again false, not true, but he has been harmful to himself and everyone around him for years. So he has a history of hurting the people closest to him. I'm ashamed of that history and I'm sorry to those I hurt. Well, sorry isn't enough sometimes. Like you need to get justice. And one of the reasons why FK Twig went to go and file this lawsuit was because Shia, when they broke up, agreed that he was going to get psychological treatment, and then he didn't. So then she was like, you know what, I'm going to file this suit because now other people are at risk of being in a relationship with you and being harmed like I was, so I'm going to hold you accountable, which FK Twigs is like literally such a strong woman that she like went to that level to go and really try to protect him. Like at the end of the day, she's not trying to go here and just like ruin his like life. She gave him that opportunity to go and get help. He did not want to get help. And now she's making sure that no other women go through this with him. 
And it's crazy to think that these people go through these struggles because they're all like celebrities and rich and famous and you think their life is so perfect, but it's far from it. FK Twigs was quoted saying, the whole time I was with him, I could have bought myself a business flight plane ticket back to my four story townhouse. But he brought her so low, below myself, that the idea of leaving him and having to work myself back up just seemed impossible. So it's clear that Shia is extremely damaging to a lot of people around him and to himself. And he's had a problematic past for a couple of years. So I want to go through memory lane and talk about the times that he was arrested and all of the warning signs that this guy is having mental health issues and probably needs to get some help. So back in 2007, Shia was arrested at a Walgreens pharmacy in Chicago right after his 21st birthday. He was arrested at 2.30 in the morning because he refused to leave the store after several requests by a security guard, and he was very drunk, appeared to be drunk. He was charged with criminal trespassing, a misdemeanor, though the charge was later dropped by the store. Actually, a spokeswoman from the police said that he was very courteous and polite after he was arrested. So at least this time, his first time, he was kind about it. Back when that went down, Shia actually went on David Letterman and he went to go tell the story of what happened. And it's kind of lighthearted, a little bit goofy. Obviously, he's got some issues here, but let's listen to what he has to say. How old, uh, do we know how old you are? You're, you just I'm turned 21. Just turned 21. Yeah. Now, what, did, what did you do to celebrate? Did you go nuts or what happened? Oh, well, I remember last time we, we talked about that. I said I, wouldn't, I wasn't going to go nuts until after Indy. And so after Indy... Yeah, what are you talking about? You're working on the movie when yeah. you turn 21. Yeah, because you you don't want to go nuts while you're filming, you sure, know. Of um, not. Uh, so, so I got pretty wasted in Chicago and wound up celebrating in Walgreens. <laughs> uh, but I had this problem. So four in the morning, um, I asked the people where I can get cigarettes. They said right. Walgreens across the street. Mm -hmm. So I go to the Walgreens, and on my way down the elevator, I'm feeling my forehead, and I feel this pimple on my forehead. Mm -hmm. and I say, "Oh, well, I got to take care of that." So I, I go to Walgreens and I go into the cosmetic aisle, and I see the security guard, and he's looking at me four in the morning, pretty disheveled, pretty messed up on the uh, special magic sauce, and, and, uh, and, I, and I get the pimple cream, and he's looking at me, he's kind of giggling to himself, and now I'm starting to feel like, well, it's really not that funny, guy, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. Men need the stuff, too, and I'm feeling kind of weird about it, and I'm feeling so weird about it, I forget to get my cigarettes. I go upstairs to my room, and, and in the hotel, I put the pimple cream on, I realize I didn't get the cigarettes. At the end of the day, Shia is an entertainer, and it's clear that he is just like fluffing up the story to make it sound better than it actually was. Like he's saying that at four in the morning, he went down to Walgreens. Well, you were arrested at 2.30 in the morning, so it wasn't four in the morning, which whatever, those are the small details. But he talks about how he came back from the Walgreens, got the pimple cream, forgot the cigarettes. Then he went down to the Walgreens again to go get cigarettes, but then he accidentally went and got candy instead. After falling into the candy aisle, he like grabbed a piece was like, okay, I'm going to check out now. And then he went back up to his room and realized again, he didn't have those cigarettes. So he decided to go back down again to get those cigarettes. And that's when he got arrested. So his third time visiting the store. Anyway, so I buy the gummy bears. I go back upstairs again. As I'm walking out, I'm like, ah, I forgot the cigarettes. Yeah. So I go back upstairs. I wait for a little while. I'm like, oh, well, I got to go back down. I got to get these cigarettes. <laughs> sure. So I throw on a hoodie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I, I go back down and, and I got the hoodie on. He goes, really? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, really? He goes, well, what are you doing here? I go, well, buddy, it's your worst nightmare. Yeah. Uh-oh. And then another security guard friend of his, because they're all friends there, mm -hmm. you know, tackles me, puts me in these plastic a handcuffs. Actually tackles you. You know, like a, like a delicate, like, lay down. Like tackle a delicate lay down, so sure. I say, <laughs> I say tackle. He was completely in the right. I was a moron. He uh -huh. gave me the handcuffs. I went to the police police station with the pimple cream on my head. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't look tough with the pimple cream no. at the station. They actually put you in the cell? They locked you in? Yeah, like the, the drunk tank. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so, so I, I'm sitting in there, and I got the pimple cream. Everybody's looking at me like, wait a minute, I know you. And I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. You know, I'm but then, weird. Now, now, I'm no uh, law student or anything, but what, what law had you broken? Well, see, that's the thing. They, they, they charged me with trespassing, but they, they held me there with right. plastic handcuffs. Right. So it was sort of, the cop was like, it was his way of like getting me out of the Walgreens, because if it was up to me, I'd have stayed there for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just their way of getting me out of the Walgreens. <laughs> and so, and then the mugshot was a whole nother thing. Uh-huh. Because it was like, we, he knew it was going to be everywhere in the morning. So he was nice about it. He looked like he, like he it was a photo shoot. Yeah. Like, let me take like 14 <laughs> mugshots. <laughs> which was nice. Thank you, by the way. I appreciate it. 
that's that celebrity treatment. You get as many mugshots as you want to. And again, he's making light of this situation, but I have a feeling that something went down during his first or second visit to where he like came back in the third time and they're like get out of here that's why you're trespassing because we've already told you to get out you've been drunk falling over on the candy and getting this pimple cream so that was kind of a stupid mistake and it was when he was 21 i mean he was turning up for his 21st birthday we kind of get it but the pattern continues from that point where it looks like he has issues with substances uh being out in public and interacting with people normally and then later on getting arrested let's talk about the time shia was arrested back in 2014 during a performance of cabaret. So he was pretty much arrested for disrupting this performance of Sam Mendes' rendition of cabaret. And pretty much Shia was smoking inside the theater and stood up during the first act of the show and shouted at the actors. <sighs> Not looking good. Police were notified and he was handcuffed and escorted out of the theater. He addressed the incident on Jimmy Kimmel back in 2014, again making light of the situation, claiming that he was just in Ireland, he had a lot of whiskey, and he continued to drink after landing back in the United States, and he was drinking throughout the show and just blamed his alcohol. The, you were arrested at the musical cabaret. So I land in New York, I'm coming back from Ireland. You know, you, you go to Ireland, you drink whiskey, uh, this dude who comes up, and I don't know this guy, but he comes up to me, he says, well, uh, why don't you come to my show? You know, I'm a dancer in this cabaret show. And I said, cabaret? Pfft, yeah. I'm walking to my seat, and on the way to the seat, I see that there's this bar over here. And I go, oh, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll have another drink. So I'm packing my cigarettes. I pull the cigarette out. I'm smoking a cigarette. And Alan Cummings walks past me, and I, I give him a slap on the ass because I think he deserves it. So I start having a cigarette, and a security guard comes up and says, can you put the cigarette out? No problem. And a, a person tells me, there's another party outside. And I'm thinking, oh, well, OK. And, uh, and I see six cops having their own party. And uh, anyways, they wind up taking me to the station. And that was, that's the story. And oh, I wow. Out. What a night. But there was something bizarre that went down during that show because Shia got a little bit handsy with a guy named Alan. So here's Alan Cumming. He is an actor and he was actually performing in that show, that one that Shia was arrested at. He bragged about the fact that he went up, Shia went up to Alan and smacked his butt because he was the hottest man he's ever seen. He, he said, I grabbed a whole cheek because I wanted a party right here in my pants. Ew. Oh my gosh. And then he was disappointed that Alan managed to wiggle out of his Hercules grip. That sounds a little bit bizarre. And I think Alan was a little uncomfy with it as well, but probably recognized that Shia was on something. I have to ask you a couple of months ago, and then one night uh, Shia LaBeouf gets arrested at the show. And I just want to hear from you what the hell happened. And the, when I went down to go on stage and start the show, everyone was freaking out because there was a you know, someone who seemed to be a crazy person shouting and right. uh, walk into the audience and go up to the back and come down. And as I walked past him, he was at a table on the end of a row and he like, whacked me. And um, I know. <laughs> and other things, you know, he kind of, he was, he was smoking. And after Shia was arrested that night, some things went down at the police station, and it did not look good. So down at the police station, Shia went and spat on a police officer's shoe. That that wasn't good. It actually led to him being escorted into a room where he was kept by himself for 25 hours, but was given a McDonald's egg sandwich. Again, like maybe the celebrity treatment because like, oh, you are Shia LaBeouf. Um, he later said, Shia did, that he's going to stay away from Broadway for a while. Now let's go ahead and switch gears and jump to the following year, 2015, because during that year, Shia had an interesting music video he was a part of. It was for Sia's song, Elastic Heart. The music video was really uncomfy because it included Maddie, who was a child at that point, and Shia, who were barely wearing anything, and a lot of people saw it and felt, again, like, uncomfortable right away. Maddie Ziegler was only 12 years old at the time, and both of the dancers were pretty much, like, had no clothing on. The video drew strong reactions from a bunch of people. Some people defending it, some people saying it's gross, but nonetheless, it was an awkward moment for Shia. Sia addressed the controversy on Twitter, saying that she knew that some people were going to say this, but all she could say that Maddie and Shia were the only two people that could do this music video, so they had to do it. Like, heaven forbid we get someone age-appropriate, because you know that Sia's obsessed with Maddie. If you guys have not seen my video about that, 
that, definitely go check it out because their relationship is extremely inappropriate. Sia did end up apologizing after some time and some backlash and she said that she's sorry to anyone who was triggered by the video, finally recognizing that there's something wrong with it, but her intention was to create something emotional, not to upset anybody. Now let's go ahead and get into 2017, because I appreciate when people are political or passionate or activists. To be honest, I'm not like a huge political person. I don't know if you guys would know that or not, but like, I'm just not like, I, I don't know. Can some people like not be that? Like, could it not be a, like, I don't know. I just don't want that characteristic. I don't know. I feel like it's like ignorant to say like, oh, I'm not a political person because I am trying to keep up and I'm trying to vote and do my best. But at the same time, it's just like something I'm not incredibly interested in. Anyways, Shia was very interested in it, and he made his message clear. In 2017, he was arrested and charged after an anti-Trump protest. See that little camera on the wall? He actually did a live streaming situation where that camera was always streaming and people could go up there and watch it and watch him. The campaign was called He Will Not Divide Us, and it was in reference to Donald Trump and him like dividing the nation or whatever. The exhibition featured a camera that was placed on the wall, and they encouraged people to go in front of it and speak into it and people will chant he will not divide us but things went down and all wrong when some guy came up there and tried to defend that german dictator that we cannot talk about on youtube and was saying some pretty awful things shia reacted really poorly to this of course because this man was trying to challenge him and shia supposedly pushed him which led to his arrest watch a little clip of shia and this guy like facing off <laughs> I mean, at this point, is it even worth it? I feel like in, in my mind, like I cannot get my body so worked up like that to where I'm like so stressed out, freaking out, like fighting with someone like I would have to just run away. I guess I'm the uh, if it's fight or flight, I'm the flight because I am flying out of there. But that same year in 2017, Shia also got in trouble down in California at a restaurant after asking a bartender to serve him french fries. So they were at a bowling alley and I guess Shia wanted to have some crunchy french fries with some ketchup, but for some reason the bartender wasn't going to serve him. I don't know why the bartender didn't want to serve him. Maybe it was close to the closing time, but it's not very clear. There's actually video footage of this situation and you guys will see that Shia is over here yelling at the bartender, telling them that they are the R word, calling them the B word, and claims that they were hit on the head with a bottle by them. Security tried getting Shia out of the bowling alley, but he stopped to call the bartender the R word a few more times before leaving. Unfortunately, he had to go back to that bowling alley because he had his bowling shoes on still, so he did have to go back to switch out his shoes. <laughs> So obviously 2017 was a rough year for Shia and it only got worse because he got in trouble again. This time it was in Georgia and he went on a tirade against a black police officer. Shia was in Savannah, Georgia because he was filming the peanut butter falcon. And one night at 4 a.m., which nothing good happens at 4 a.m., like you should be asleep at that point. But Shia got into an interaction with a bystander and a police officer, and someone asked for a cigarette. Uh, they were refused one, and Shia got very upset and started like cussing them out. He was asked to leave the area, but refused and continued to call the officer horrible names. When the officer tried to arrest Shia, he ran to a nearby hotel. Shia was arrested in the hotel lobby where his disorderly behavior continued. At this point, he was talking a bunch about Trump, saying, you've got a president who doesn't give a, a crap about you, and you're stuck in a police force that doesn't give an F about you. He said to the officers, so you want to arrest what? White people who give an F? So he's just going on a whole tangent that's not even related. In footage obtained by TMZ, you can hear that Shia is telling the officers that you're going to hell, straight to hell, bro, especially you, Devin, one of the officers, and a white officer asked Shia why he said Devin specifically and Shia said because he's a black man. What did I do, sir? Bro, why are you yelling my face? Because I have rights. 
Right, I have right, right to an American. Come on, come on, come on talk to me. You got on. me in my hotel, arrested right, me right, in my hotel on, for doing on, what, on. sir? Let's go. You got a president that don't give a shit about you, and you stuck in a police force that don't give a shit about you. So you want to arrest right, black, white doing. people who give a shit, who ask for cigarettes? I came up to you asking for a cigarette, you dumb shit. So that body cam footage isn't looking good for Shia, and I honestly cannot understand how he gets himself to a place where he's so worked up and wants to fight. Like again, I am the type who's a flight, like I'm going to be running before I get myself so heated fighting with people that you don't even really know. Shia did later on apologize for his behavior, and he shared on Twitter that he was deeply ashamed of everything he did and there were no excuses for it. Here's his full apology if you want to pause and read it, but it's pretty general. Um, He does bring up his surprise which seems to be a major issue for him. So it would be great if he was focusing on that because all of these incidents have a theme that he's always on some type of substance. We know that he likes alcohol, but we also don't know if he likes other things. And I wouldn't be surprised because of the way he acts sometimes. Later on in 2019, Shia reflected on this time in his life and actually says that his co-star, Zach, saved him from this twisted time in his life and that this guy nursed him back on a boat during a scene where they were talking about like the painful past that stuff hurts. I don't know exactly what he is talking about there, but it sounds like they had moments where they really talked about their past and it was healing for Shia. And thankfully there was that guy, Zach, there for him. But of course, Shia cannot stay out of the media and out of trouble for long because in August 2020, he was getting called out again. This time for a very different situation because people were claiming that he was doing brown face inside the movie, The Tax Collector. I guess in that movie, Shia was supposed to be playing a stereotype typical Mexican and he actually has an accent to go along with his look and people said that he was doing brown face to play a character outside of his own ethnicity. However, the creator of the movie, David Ayer, went to Twitter to say that there's no brown face here and that actually Shia wasn't playing a Latino character. He was playing a white character, a white boy who grew up in the hood. So um, <laughs> I guess he's not actually doing brown face. That's just kind of a random controversy to throw in there. That same year in 2020, actually a month after that whole brown face, he got in trouble again in September. At this point, he was being charged with three counts, so it wasn't looking good for Shia. Supposedly, Shia got into a physical altercation with a man named Tyler, which ended up with Shia stealing Tyler's hat and running away with it. Although the incident took place on June 12th, the charges were filed on September 24th. Wow, Shia has not been arrested for these charges, but it looks like they were they got an arrest warrant. Oof, so he was going to be. Also, what is going on here? So he's fighting with this guy, Tyler. We don't know why they were fighting. And also he stole his hat and ran away with it. So like that's a reason to go. I don't even know. Sounds so messy and very immature. There's one more thing I do want to bring up, something from back in 2014 that I cannot get out of my mind when I was researching for this video. I just, yeah, it makes me sick. So you may remember back in 2014, he was promoting a movie and he actually went onto the red carpet and wore a paper bag and said, I'm not famous anymore. Honestly, that's not really the part I want to bring up to you guys. He was using that phrase all over Twitter and he constantly was saying, I'm not famous anymore, I'm not famous anymore. In my mind, it seemed like he was a little bit hurt that he just like wasn't the number one star anymore, but he was trying to get back into it. I believe that Shia is constantly going through mental health struggles and he's not getting the support he needs because while he was filming that movie that he was promoting in 2014, there were some really concerning things going on. Like the fact that he kept his personal hygiene to a bare minimum because he was trying to be in character. He got a tooth pulled for the film and actually cut a scar onto his face. He walks out into a hallway and says, hey man, want to see something fun? Check it out. And he takes a knife and literally makes it real so you don't even need the prosthetics. And he said throughout the whole movie, he would open up his cuts so they were real so that they looked real on camera. That is extreme. Like that, they should have stopped right there and been like, okay, we're going to get a psychologist because like this type of, we can use makeup to make these scars. You don't actually have to make these scars. Why does he go to this level to where he's harming himself by doing this. It also looks like there was a lot of fights on set of that movie. Um, Jimmy Kimmel asked him, they fist fought every day on set, right? And he said, oh yeah, every day. It worked, it really bonded us. You can only get so much out in a conversation with a bunch of boys in that setting. Fighting is really intimate. I'm not saying we didn't get mad at each other, but we love each other and it dies when we leave. Hmm. 
So I have a feeling that Shia LaBeouf is very toxic and that every time he goes onto set or works on a new project, he brings some of the darkness with him, which is really sad because when I watch him, I think of him as a charming man. He's funny, like he's good looking, obviously, and people have adored him for years and years, but he still does have his faults. And we can't sit here in society and hold other people accountable, but at the same time say it's okay when Shia does it. I mean, the whole thing with FKA Twigs is already so concerning alone that the rest of this video doesn't even really matter because that should have just been like the, the major red flag that stopped it all. I don't think he's ever gotten any help. I've looked into him like going into rehab and things like that. It doesn't look like he's ever lasted long. So I would challenge Shia to go and like really focus on himself and his mental health and make sure that he's 100% in a good place because it doesn't seem like he's ever really been in a good place. And then he grew into this mega star who did not know how to handle his emotions when getting into conflict. So I am sending some good vibes that way, but also like, oh gosh, like he needs a break and I don't think that he he should be hired by anyone until they confirm that he's all right. And I tried to look up information about the whole FK Twigs. Like, did he go and get help because that's what she initially wanted him to do? And it doesn't look like he has. So still an open wound there. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do have a PO Box package item to open for you guys. It's from the Noodle Craft. And if you guys ever want to send me anything, it's uh, listed below. Also, here's my email if you have any video ideas for me or any comments about the Shia thing. Some of you guys emailed me some really great things about, the, about him for this video. So thank you for that. But let's go ahead and open this and give a little shout out to their business. Oh my gosh, look. <gasps> The Noodle Craft. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this. I love crafts. I don't know if it's going to be a craft, but um, it's definitely a shop and a small business. So definitely go support it. I will link everything below, but let's see what's going on here. Okay. Ooh. Oh my gosh, I'm so hype. I'm so hype. Okay. I'm guessing this is the note right here. Nice packaging too. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Aw. And he sent me some cute stickers. Hi. Hi Sloan, I'm Noodle. I wanted to reach out to thank you. The past few months have been really difficult and watching your videos have made me so happy. I wanted to give you this gift as a show of my sincerest appreciation. You have given me such an admiration for celebrity news and you have such an informative yet entertaining style of presentation. Thank you. Thank you for the education on both Free Britney Movement and Free Amanda Movement. I would not have known so much about these intense situations without you. You are simply wonderful and you deserve to know um, that you make a big difference in the world. Your friend noodle all oh, noodle thank you noodle i really appreciate that wait the craft noodle did you give me a card because i don't know how i'm going to link everything below oh wait <gasps> is that a card i don't know but we're going to try to figure this out because this is so sweet thank you noodle i really love that let's go ahead and see what they sent me Ooh. okay oh my gosh this is so funny okay what is this thing let's see i love your guys small businesses <gasps> oh my gosh some bows. You guys may or may not know I have a puppy who wears bows all the time. These will be so cute in her hair. <gasps> Thank you so much, Noodle. I love that. Um, and then these, oh my gosh, I really need this because I never have any like good storage things. Oh my gosh, and there's a lot in here. Wow, Noodle, you went above and beyond. So this is a cute little like Sid Nudes like little packet. I love that little canvas bag. And then it looks like she sent me a keychain, and it looks like it's made out of resin in the middle. It's like a little heart situation. Super cute, we love that. And then here is another keychain, and it looks like, again, it's like maybe some type of resin. I love this one because it looks like a cat and ice cream. So that's vibes, 100%. Let's see what else this little, oh, what are these things? Not too sure what these things are, but they look like little, like, how do you, I don't know how to open these things. Oh, here we go. A little ASMR, okay. Wow, oh, oh, they're little magnets, so cute. I can use that on my little, like, I put your guys' notes on this magnet board, so this would be perfect to add to that, thank you. Oh, good magnets, I could always use a good magnet. And then let's see what, there's so much stuff, you sent me so much stuff, thank you, Noodle. Such a good, nice friend. But also, I need to find your business because I don't see your card here, so, wow. Oh my gosh, this looks like a bougie, is this a necklace or something? What is going on here? The packaging is also really good, like, why does it seem like it's all so professional? Um, let's see what's going on. Wow, oh my gosh, it looks like it is a necklace. This is so cool, I don't have anything like this. Like, I don't have any, like, fabric-y kind of necklaces like that. <gasps> Such a vibe, I'll have to work with a blue shirt. Thank you, oh, I love that, so cool. And then, finally, I think this is the last thing. <laughs> let's check it out. Oh, it looks like a few things in here. Oh, <gasps> oh my gosh, these are pins, little, like, 
pins that you can wear on your shirt, okay? She sent a few of these. Oh my gosh, so cool. Look at that. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Noodle. Okay, I need to hold this thing up because I love these so much. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. If I can find their information, I will link it below. Um, Noodle, if you're seeing this, email me so I can link everything so people can go get their own. And until next time, I will see you in a new video soon. Bye, guys.